Welcome students, I'm Mr. Boscarini and for our unit on forces and motion today's lesson will deal with how to record the motion of an object. In class we're going to study the motion of toy cars or as we call them in physics trolleys. Um, a typical example of studying the movement of a trolley is placing the trolley on a runway, a runway which is tilted so that the trolley once released will go down the, the runway and presumably it will speed up, so it will accelerate. You know already that in order to find the speed of an object you have to measure the distance traveled divided by the time taken. Here we're going to do something a bit more complex and we're going to use um, this kind of apparatus. We will have um, a box here which is called the ticker timer unit and attached to it there is a piece of carbon tape which is called ticker timer tape. And what is the usefulness of this? How does it work? Now a ticker timer unit has inside um, a little pin that goes up and down 50 times per second and carbon tape is pressure sensitive so as you pass carbon tape through the ticker timer unit the pressure of a spin will leave a very small dot so as you as you pass the tape you will see a series of dots and between two consecutive dots you know there is one fiftieth of a second because the pin goes up and down 50 times per second. Now this is an enlarged version of what you will have. So a piece of tape and a series of dots and you know that this object does 50 dots per second. Let's see how we can use this tape attached to a trolley that moves down a runway to find information about the movement of a trolley. But first, let's understand what kind of um, patterns you can find on a ticker timer tape. And here there are four examples. Let's see the first one. In the first one, you can see that the dots are evenly spaced. What does it mean? It means that in the same interval of time, because between two consecutive dots, there's always the same amount of time, typically one fiftieth of a second, that depends on the kind of ticker timer unit you have, in our case it's, a, it's really one fiftieth of a second, and equal time, and in a, if in equal time you travel the same distance, that means you're doing the same speed, so you have the same speed here, the same speed here, here, and so on. So, a pattern of dots like this one means that the object is traveling at a constant speed. How about this one? Again here you see that the dots are evenly spaced. What's the difference? The difference is that the distance between two consecutive dots is bigger. Now, if you travel a larger distance over the same time, it means you're traveling at a higher speed. So this tape is recording, again, a constant speed, but higher than this one. And actually, if you compare the two, you will see that for each two intervals of a tape above, you have one interval of a tape below. And that means that this tape is recording a speed which is twice as big as this one. How about this one? Here we have dots which are becoming more and more far apart. And now it should be easy to understand that that means that the object is changing its speed. Actually, in this case, the speed is increasing. And how do we call an increasing speed? We call it acceleration. In a similar fashion, you can see that here, the dots are becoming closer and closer together 
And that means that this object is actually slowing down, as we call it, this is a deceleration. Now we will see how we can use a piece of tape to actually find out the speed of an object. First of all, once you um, attach a piece of tape to a trolley, the trolley has moved down uh, the runway and you've taken back the tape, you have to find a starting point, you have to mark it. For instance, this is our beginning point. You have to remember that between two dots, two consecutive dots, there is a time interval of one fiftieth of a second. That means 0 0.02 seconds. That means, again, you have to remember the formula for speed, distance divided by time, the speed between two consecutive dots on a ticker timer tape will always be the distance, that is, the distance that you measure with your ruler divided by 0.02. So, you prepare a table like the following, you know that the time will always increase by 0.02, so you go 0.02, 0.04, 0.06, and let's imagine that I go here with my ruler and it turns out that the first two dots are spaced apart by one centimeter. I write it here, I do my math and it turns out that the speed recorded in that first interval is 50 centimeters per second, and mind the unit. Then I look at the second interval, mind you, I'm not measuring the distance always from the beginning dot, I always measure the distance between two consecutive dots. So I'm not measuring now the distance from here to here, but from here to here. Let's say it turns out to be 1.5 centimeters. Again, I do my math, it comes out that the speed is 75 centimeters per second. And we can continue. In this way, we can have a faithful record of what was the movement of our trolley. We have the times, we have the distance traveled, and we can work out the speed at different times. And you already can see with the numbers I made up that this object is accelerating. So far we've seen how we can record uh, the motion of an object, we can find the time travel, the distance and the speed. But uh, at the end, what we want to find, and this will be the purpose of a lab that we're going to carry out soon, will be to find the acceleration of our trolley. Now you must remember that the formula for acceleration is the change of speed, so final speed minus initial speed, divided by the time taken over which we're recording our motion. How do we do this in practice? Let's imagine we have a very long piece of tape that recorded the motion of a trolley. We look at the first interval uh, between points A and B. Now the speed between these two points, these two dots, will be our initial speed. And now we know how to find that initial speed. We measure the distance and divide by 0.02. And there we have U. Then we go at the very end of our tape. Again, with our ruler, we measure the distance, we divide by 0.02, and that will give us the final speed. How about the time then? The time from here to here, you can find by just simply counting how many intervals you have from these two points to these two points. And the time taken from here to here will be the number of intervals multiplied again by 0.02, which is the time interval between two consecutive dots. So, what was the learning goal of this lesson? By the end of this lesson, you should be able to understand, to interpret the pattern of dots that you'll find on a ticker timer tape. 
Our next lesson will be about falling objects, or more specifically, about free falls.